Hey guys, it is time to discuss this week's top five cards to target and avoid for NHL 20 Hockey Ultimate Team. Let's get right into it. First up on the target list, we have Justin Schultz, the 82 overall prime time. The reason why I'm suggesting him is just the state of right D as a whole. It is still extremely weak. And for someone that's starting out and it's a lot lower budget, again, you can get this card for just around 7,000 coins. It's going to be a great upgrade for you just because, again, the position is so weak. So 90 above 90 skating with the 87 endurance and balance, which is great. And then the slap shot accuracy is 78, so that is low, but his power is 83, which is enough. So this is, again, nothing crazy, but in the state of right defenseman, this is a pretty good card for a free-to-play player. And you're going to get him for around 7,000 coins. Next up, we've got the primetime Anthony Mantha. Now, all of my videos in the past three years, I tell you guys, always sell primetimes and team of the weeks immediately as you get them because they only depreciate in value. They never go up because, well, it's like buying a car. The second that you get a team of the week or primetime, there's only going to be higher rated cards coming out in the future, so it's just a bad investment. However, this Anthony Mantha, because of his size and his stats, this is going to be in your lineup for quite some time. So right now he's going for about 120k, all right? And it's only going to go down. So if you're watching this maybe later on in the week, it's probably going to be cheaper. But the reason why I suggest him is because he's 6 foot 5, 225. More importantly, if you're playing on PlayStation, he's just not going to lose the puck. His balance is a 93, his skating is all over 90, and he's got a wicked wrist shot at 85 and 88 respectively. He's a fantastic winger again, a specifically for PlayStation on Xbox. He's going to be just as good because bumps are easier, but on PlayStation with that balance combined with his size, he's just not really going to lose the puck at all i'm looking out for him um, on the market i just haven't pulled the trigger yet but he's going for around the same price as kucherov who is you know kucherov is obviously a bigger name he's a little bit faster has a little bit better shot but it, not by much and because of the size on mantha i really like him for around the same price so anything around under 120 around 100k if you can find one for 100k i'd pull the trigger Next up is the team of the week, Matt Barzell. Now, he's only going to go down in price as well, but around 50K, again, you're going to get him cheaper later in the week. At 6 foot, 92 skating, has X Factor, and his wrist shots in 83 and 85. Great card for the price. Again, I would look for him around 40 to 35K, which will happen soon when next week's team of the week comes out tomorrow. You can't play him on center because of his face-off rating being 76, but this would be a good card to invest in. Again, around 40k. The next one, again, is another informed card with the 89 Connor McDavid, but this is a preemptive one. I don't think the price of which he's going for right now, which varies between, well, 700k and 8, around 8 and 9. Like, if you've seen this one up for 700k, he hasn't even sold yet, so it is going to drop even more, but he's got 99 speed, agility, and acceleration along with 90 endurance and then his wrist shot is a 90 overall with 86 mcdavid is going to get a card every month that's pretty much a guarantee but he is one of the best winger cards in the game so if you can get this card around 500k if it keeps dropping this week a hundred percent pull the trigger like i said he's always going to go down in value but you could have this card on your team until the end of the year almost. Like I said, there's always going to be better ones that come up because he's got end game speed and 90 wrist shot accuracy and power. He's going to be useful to you pretty much all the way through. Six foot one, 192. No reason to not pull the trigger on him. He's better than almost every single icon card. I would grab him. And the last one for this week is the 90 overall Jean Valavo. And the reason why I need to bring him up is because, well, he is a 90 overall and you can still make him but the bare minimum cost to make him is going to be around 400,000 coins just because you need 9 of them to get the 90 set. But if you see any of these drop below around 350, I would pull the trigger and here is why. Again, this is going to pertain depending on what console you play on. But at 6 foot 3, 205 and a 94 balance, on PlayStation, he's going to be one of the better cards. I have a blast with him and bigger cards like him because they just can't be knocked off the puck. And I'm going to show you guys some strategy things that you can use and how to use these cards. But 
it's not all about speed on wing anymore, and I've now come to realize that. I was always just about worry about the speed of the player, nothing else. And now, just by seeing how PlayStation plays, specifically how you can't really get bumped off the puck with a big player, it's damn near impossible. You can really circle down low with someone like Bellavo, and if you're getting him for a er, tradable version for less than what you would have to pay to do the 90 overall set... I would 100% pull the trigger, so just keep an eye out. Again, the cheapest one right here is 360, and I would go as you're probably going to see one go up for under 350 within the next few days. I would then pull the trigger on him. He's he's worth that for sure. On to the cards I would avoid, and I want to bring up a certain set. All right, guys, so the fantasy set to make Brady Kachuk is honestly um, the only fantasy card set that I'm going after. I think that Brady Kachuk is an awesome player. I love watching him. He's already an 82 overall. I think he has a very good shot of being a 99 early. The problem is, is that you're paying full dollar for him. He's still going for seven to 800K, sometimes over a million. And a lot of people want to make him, which obviously makes sense. The problem is, is that it still costs 50 gold collectibles, or sorry, gold player items to trade in and get a gold collectible that you need. You need 18 to get. Here's the thing. Those new packs that came out give a 50% chance of getting a gold collectible, which means it has dropped the price of gold collectibles a significant amount. I just want people to understand, if you're trying to get gold collectibles, do not trade your gold players in because you're losing thousands of coins. Right now, if you set it for 30k, there is a ton that you can get for under 30k, which would make... Brady Kachuk, even though he will be untradeable, for 540,000 coins. And you can get him for even cheaper because, you know, they're not all 30k, there's quite a bit under. Now the problem with this is that you can sell your gold player items, so say you need 50 gold player items to make one gold collectible that's, uh, that's tradable, you can still sell your gold player items for around 900 coins, meaning that you're losing almost 14,000 coins by doing this trade in set as opposed to just going to the market now and buying gold collectibles it seems to be the currency right now for this event and it is the only set but i would avoid doing this one particular do not trade your players in for the gold collectible set if you want brady kachuk and do not do these other sets guys the 33 percent chance do not not worth it at all if you're gonna buy gold collectibles buy them for the brady kachuk Buy them the tradable versions. They are going for 14,000 coins at least cheaper in the auction house. Next up is a repeat that I've been saying, but I need to just stress this again. All of these classic cards, so the Wayne Gretzky, the Ronick, as well as the Iserman, are going for well over what they're actually worth. 400k for the 90 Gretzky, who's 90 across the board, is far worse then the amount of coins that you could spend to get the 91, even though it is untradeable. And hell, even if you save up another 300,000 coins, you can get the 91 that's untradeable. Same with the Jeremy Roenick. He's going for around 250 to 300,000 coins. There's better right-wingers that are, you know, right-handed players that are, you know, in the 85s. I would avoid all of these classic cards. There's just no point in them yet. I think a lot of people are just trying to get them because A, the set's over, so you can't get them again. And they're a really cool looking card just based on the carter. But yeah, avoid these cards again. I just need to stress that um, so that you guys aren't wasting your money on them. Next up would be the primetime Artemi Panarin for around 200k. I get that it's Panarin. He's the hotness on the Rangers. But man, for what his stats are, I know he's got SP, but you can just find more rounded, well-rounded cards, especially for around 200k. He does shoot right, which is nice, 94 speed, which is all great as well, and his wrist shot is, you know, 88 and 85. I just wouldn't spend this much on Artemi Panarin. Again, if you're looking for someone like McDavid, who has roughly the same kind of stats, the base McDavid, who's going for like 100, you know, almost 120k less than him. Um, just something to keep an eye on. I get why people want to go after him, but I would just avoid him at this price. And the next one would be the primetime Morgan Riley. There's only one up on PlayStation, but if he's going for anything more than 80k, I would avoid. The reason why is that you can get other defensemen that are better, especially left-handed ones. It's the right-handed ones that are significantly weaker for far cheaper than this card. 
Um, 140K, even anything over 100 is just too much. His slap shot accuracy is well under 80, and his speed is nice, 100%, but there's just really no, no reason to pay this much for him. And then lastly, of the cards I would recommend avoiding, it's making the Hut Icon collectibles. So just like making the gold collectibles with your player items, cards are now kind of reaching the value at which they cost to make as well as what they're going for on the market. Obviously not the 90s. Um, they're still going for quite a bit, except for Bellavo, but anything under 400 for them is a great deal. If you look at some of the 88s, I mean, Sackick I saw for like 300 k that's a great price. They're kind of almost meeting in the middle, and you're getting the untradeable version, which is obviously much better. So I would just avoid creating HUD icon collectibles right now. You could sell your players if you are making them like that for about, you know, um, almost 45,000 coins. And, you know, the coins is always going to be more valuable than making these, but now the value is starting to run out where the collectibles are costing almost as much to make as the card is now you know, the tradable version on the market. So just be wary of those costs. Look out for those. Um, I still would recommend doing these two. Um, these are both fantastic cards. They're going to be in the game for a very, very long time. So guys, that is going to do it for me. Let me know if you have any thoughts or your own cards that you found this week. If you agree, if you tried out any of these ones, let me know in the comments section down below. And again, thank you for all of the subscriptions lately. And catch me on Twitch, 9 a.m. till... Whenever, Monday to Friday on twitch.tv slash no sleeves 12. You guys have a good one.